so the the backstory to this episode is our sort of um, ongoing war with the uh, Catholic Church, or rather their followers here in America, or their yeah. followers on Twitter. Is this it, priest? The Pope's new army? A few crusty bitches and a handful of ragtags? Uh, I see. I was going to start out the show by... Um, being to, uh, saying some good things about the Catholic Church, so maybe you guys can chime in. I'd like to say they've midwifed uh, some great art and architecture. A lot of great writers true, are yeah. Catholic, um, and probably like a thousand years ago, they were at the cutting edge of like um, reason and philosophy and knowledge, at least in Europe and the West. Um, I don't know. It's about it. Yeah, it's kind of it. I mean, uh, they uh, Martin Scorsese, yeah, yeah, Martin, Martin Scorsese, Martin Scorsese, definitely, Scorsese, yeah. Uh, Tony Soprano. Mm -hmm. After that, nothing like no. not much. Bad Lieutenant. Yeah, not much. Don't, for, don't forget the Bad Lieutenant. Oh bad yeah, Lieutenant. Abel, Abel okay, Ferrara. Yeah, yeah. Abel Ferrara. Like I said, like it, it, it's an interesting, uh, you know, it's an interesting mix that's uh, sort of, like I said, brought forth um, a lot of conflicted and uh, pained yeah. geniuses. What have they done? Name one thing they've contributed. Votes. Votes, you say? They vote how the Archbishop tells them, and who tells the Archbishop their king in the pointy hat what sits on his throne in Rome? Let's get into the, the, the first thing, that, the, the article that was written about us, because, like I said, I saw this on, on this thing, this came out on Tuesday, or like Tuesday or Wednesday, in First Things magazine, the title "Christians Stay Away from Irony Bros," <laughs> and and the first sentence, the first sentence is: If you were asked to describe Chapo Trap House by someone who knew nothing about it, just stop right there. What I said immediately was like coming out of uh, you know a weekend, a back to back sold out live shows that we did. Seriously, nothing felt more rewarding than reading this article to me, at least. I mean, I don't I don't know how you guys felt, but um. And, and here's the deal. Like, you know, I should give some background here. Uh, I invited the author of this article, Mark um, Mark Marin. No, fuck. No. <laughs> hey, what the fuckers? Uh, I want to thank, uh, first of all, our sponsors, Vatican II and the Vatican Bank. Does anybody hate why they can't launder money for the mafia? <laughs> the Vatican Bank <laughs> All right, no more jokes about people's names. You know, I'm, okay, I'm going to be polite. This sorry. is this is Mark Mason uh, wrote the article, and I reached out to him on Twitter, and you know, I said, "Do you want to come on the show and talk about the article?" Because, you know, we're going to talk about it on the show. And the last time, you know, someone like we, someone like this who wrote an article that was making fun of us or critical of us, uh, Robbie Suave, you'll remember we invited him on the show. Uh, so I did the same for Mark Mason, and I told him to listen to the Robbie Suave episode and said we'd be on our best behavior. But, you know, nonetheless, I said, you know, we're kind of going to kind of have to roast the article a little bit. But I got to say, uh, Mark, he, he, he didn't want to do the show. That I think that's totally fine. That's that's his prerogative. He was very genuine. Um, you know, he was honest. Uh, we had an honest discussion about it. He, you know, we we had a good conversation about it. And like I said, he was genuine. And there was nothing in the article really that I thought was you know gratuitously wrong or offensive. I just thought it was funny. Um, so you know, when you get to actually contact a, you know a real human being like that, it makes um, owning them all the more difficult. But luckily, Matt and Felix didn't talk or meet this guy at all, so no. we, can, we can go on. Yeah, because I made no agreement when I when I read when I read what he said about how I don't feel it's like, and I, my thought was Robbie Suave, whose entire body is made of fucking cartilage, <laughs> came in here and was willing to fucking get roasted. He showed a lot of heart. Guy who considers himself this guy who considers himself like you know a warrior for Christ is like I may get made fun of. <laughs> oh, can we talk about another? Ooh, when ooh, when, can we talk when about the another? Ottomans are at the gates of Vienna? You're not going to be able to fucking stop them. But ooh, looks like someone knows that the real God isn't on his side. Ooh, you say God's real name. Can we you talk think about you can it? Do that. You can't, bitch. With, ooh. God, with God, all things are possible except going on a podcast. Yeah. Like I said, so until someone does want to come on and defend the honor of the Catholic Church, we're just going to have to sacrilege. We're just gonna have to blast yeah, him gratuitously. Yeah. So and there, um. Anyway, so uh, let me. I just want to read a little from the uh, from Mark Mason's article about us. Um, he says, you know, uh, the podcast is discursive and meandering and dense with allusions to pop culture and things that go viral on Twitter. That is correct. It is highly irreverent and highly ironic. The hosts have been dubbed irony bros, and that's probably a good enough description. 
Unlike older, probably <laughs> writer, <laughs> right? <laughs> Unlike older, more classical forms of irony, the irony of these irony bros is omnidirectional and a universal solvent. Now, that line was one thing that I, I was going to take issue with him if he came on the show. But in our conversation, Mark said in listening back to our other shows that our use of irony was, in fact, not omnidirectional. And that, you know, we, we do have some heart. We do have some direction to our uh, well, irony. Well, I also, frankly, I think the whole irony thing is, is nonsensical. What does that even mean? I mean, for the most, when we have our show, we're pretty fucking sincere, it seems to me. Yeah. I mean, we're not doing a. I don't even know what the what irony, frankly, is, and when they refer to it, like I don't know. It's what like you know, classical when they say we're ironic, like classical forms of irony, like Jonathan Swift, where he only made fun of one thing. Yeah, I mean, which is also but, because but like people making, irony isn't making fun of something. Those things aren't interchangeable terms, right? Irony. What do they specifically mean by it being ironic? Irony is it like it's like fucking Alanis Morissette. It means nothing. It's just a gibberish word. <laughs> irony is a rich intellectual tradition where you get to say the n word on the internet. <laughs> uh, irony is not Jonathan Swift, who used a very uh, very feeble form of irony that people in the past used because they were weak and uh, they drink beer for breakfast. They were all short, uh, <laughs> disgusting, awful, childish irony. They could never have the honor, courage, or intelligence to uh, reply to Hillary Clinton with screenshots from uh, Dan Quinn videos. They could never make an alt account where they say the N-word, which, you know, the which fall under the rich purview of modern irony, which is what we do. <laughs> well, these guys basically hate the modern world. I mean, no, that, that is yeah, the trad like, cast yeah. sort of that is their calling card. Uh, this is this is a line I like a lot. Uh, he writes, like Holden Caulfield, the Chapo guys believe everyone is a phony. Unlike Holden Caulfield, they are sometimes witty. No one escapes their destructive gaze. I just think they say, also like Holden Caulfield, we will uh, probably shoot John Lennon or a musical figure of uh, his probably. caliber sometime uh, soon. Or one of our fans will, probably. Unlike Holden Caulfield, we don't hang out with kids. That's weird. That's no good. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even look at kids. That's no good. But here's where he gets into like the, the meat of the article. He says, This is just what makes them confusingly alluring to some. They have a cult following, including among a group of leftist Catholics who call themselves illiberal Catholics or Tradinistas. We're going to get into the Tradinistas later, but he's, we're going to explain that in a second. But he says, These Tradinistas coalesce around a strong critique of free market capitalism and a full-throated defense of the church's social teachings. Um, and it goes on to define that a little bit more. Uh, it says they were particularly drawn into the episode where we made fun of Kevin Williamson, and that that was our like subterfuge. That's how we that's how we hooked him, right? And we also hate the National Review. They hate the National Review for their sort of racism and extolling of free market capitalism. Blah blah blah. Um, and it says it makes sense that they would be attracted to the critique that we're offering on the show, which is like we said, we make fun of uh, liberals and a lot of you know. A lot of things that are sort of like mainstream liberal uh, shibboleths. We, we, we do not spare them on this show. Um, what does he say? Uh, so when it comes to Irony Bros, like the Chapo Trap House crew, some Christians see the fact that they attack both sides equally as a sign that maybe they're doing something right. Love that boy. <laughs> Love that boy. Maybe they could be an ally in the fight against liberalism. But the Irony Bros will never be allies of Christianity. <laughs> Damn it. Oh. <laughs> One writer who saw all this coming was Matthew Walther, associate editor of the Washington Free Beacon. Prophet. <laughs> Walther said, tweeted the following on August 31st. Can we ban this Chapo Trap House thing? It clearly destroys minds to say nothing of faith and morals. The Chapo crew and their loyal fans unleashed a stream of Twitter and anti-Catholic invective that cannot be repeated here. Why not? Just like link to it here. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, otherwise, I don't know what you're it. talking about. Suffice to say, it was disgusting and completely unoriginal. Many of the Tradinistas expressed displeasure with the anti-Catholicism, but some maintain the Champo crew were still an important ally in the fight against liberalism. The controversy died down after a while and was largely forgotten. Okay, 
here's the one line I want to uh, take issue with here where he says, I, for, I, first of all, I don't know like what this anti-Catholic invective was. I mean, is that just making fun of the Catholic Church? I think it like, was, you know, uh, like someone made the uh, Chomo joke. Okay, someone made the Chomo joke. And that's Me. when he's, I mean, I'm sorry. And it it's would, when he it, says... Like, it, is, it's, it's, it is vile and totally off, uh, just totally just hate speech to point out that the Catholic Church carried out a decades-long international conspiracy to cover up for hundreds of child molesters. <laughs> Totally. I mean, if you were to just say something like that and it wasn't true, that would just be an awful calumny. I mean, when he said completely unoriginal, like my sort of take on that was like, it's a shame that everyone's sort of go to slam of the Catholic Church is so universally predictable. But like that's there's sort of a reason for that. And it's just at some point you're going to have to take this L. You know what I mean? I, I like the films of Roman Polanski, but like he still should have been in jail. You know what I mean? You know, it goes on and says, there are two lessons to take from this. First, there can be no common cause between Christianity and irony bros. <laughs> Indeed, that oh, no. irony bros have any cause other than omnidirectional destruction is stunningly ignorant. Again, Mark uh, slightly walked that back to me, uh, but I'm, you know, I'm, it's, that's fine. Um, Anyway, he says, my suggestion is we take lessons from this incident and then, of course, never speak of the Chapo guys again. So good luck with that. Do you guys realize that, like, you're the freaks in this equation? <laughs> like, we're not... It's not like you, that, like, you strayed and, like, found some weird people and you're like, all right, let's never talk about... Like, you're weird. You want the government to, like, tell people they can't fuck other people in the ass. <laughs> like, th- there's something wrong with you. You're kind of a fucking and they, freak. And they also, they, they also want, like, well, they want state censorship authority to like like when he said when walter says can we ban this chapa thing i mean in his ideal world he would be speaking literally yep like actual ban like legion of decency shit and we i actually saw a thread between a couple of these guys a couple weeks ago where this one they were like debating whether we were quote unquote evil <laughs> the, the word evil was used. you're a fucking asshole and whether you think we that. were and whether we were damning people to hell by listen like we, whether we were actually causing people to be damned by by listening to us i guarantee you that if these guys had their way they would basically turn america into like 50s ireland with like a, a religious police force running around like Stamping, uh, you know, forbidden on shit and burning it in giant pyres. Let's bring back those Magdalene so, you know laundries. I'm okay not being on that team. <laughs> yeah. I'm fine with that. Um, yeah, I like. Look, I. Uh, you can build coalitions out of anything. The Syrians' uh, defense forces show this. <laughs> but uh, one thing you cannot build a coalition off of is about 50 New Deal Democrats who are afraid of the new of the female orgasm and anyone else. Uh. Good luck selling your vision of the world to anyone. The other thing I want to say is, like, when I was talking to Mark, I asked him, like, what in... He said, he, he's like, you know, when I listen to you guys talk to Suave, he's like, you know, I agree with you on economic issues. And, like, I said, the question I would ask you is, like, what does, like, a coalition or, like, collaboration between Catholic, like, Catholics and lefties, like, what would that look like to you? And he and he said, I think he made a good point that you know Orthodox Catholics are have always been organizing on like single issues in conjunction with the left, but when it comes to like supporting certain candidates, it becomes harder. And he was like, I think a lot of them, a lot of the Chattanistas did support Bernie Sanders, and he was like, well, it'll become an issue for you if we ever get like a candidate that is like a you know at a Bernie Sanders level who is in favor of all the economic redistribution, but also thinks abortion is murder. And then, then it would be incumbent on us to be like, okay, can I cross <laughs> that Rubicon? Can I, can I cast a vote for that, even though I have such a fundamental disagreement on what I regard as basically a non-negotiable issue? Like a core, I think a core commitment of any left-wing political agenda is that abortion must be legal. Yeah, uh, also non-negotiable to me are gay marriage and the non-criminal status of uh, homosexual sex. Uh, my, my, also, uh, uh, my, you know, my, my, my brother is gay. I'm not going to... I'm sorry, but online bonds between some fucking sexually demented weirdos who may or may not support socialized medicine are not thicker than blood. 
Also, you know what? Uh, no theocracy. Thank you very much. Good on it. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. It was. A, it was astounding listening to these guys list off all their stuff. Like, hey, I'm in favor of socialism. I'm in favor of getting getting beyond capitalism and creating robust life. Debt. And yeah, I also want the church to be in charge of the state. Yeah, I want. I want to dip into the Tradenista manifesto. Uh, but before I do, I just want to like shout out. I saw an amazing thread between a guy who was like one of our. He was a former fan of the show who's now mad at us because we insulted the Catholic Church. And it was it was a thread between him and another guy where he was arguing with a guy over whether Jews and homosexuals are acceptable in society. And he was taking the oh, sort yeah. of the he was taking the, uh, the 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 pro he was saying that yes, that is acceptable, or it's more complicated than you make out. And I just like to suggest if you find yourself even halfway seriously in that argument, you've already you're already around the fucking bend, dude. Like, dude I, I believe like, like he said something like, I, I don't believe that Jews and sodomy are uh, necessarily bad. Like something like that. Always, uh, like shit. Open minded. Wow. You know, you know, you're, uh, you know, you're off to a good start when, uh, you are like maybe two, two tweets in the argument. And you're like, look, the Jews, as a group, not all bad. We have to qualify that. You are in for some good shit. Well. Again, like I, I think this is an interesting thing because, like, the Tradenista Manifesto. Let's go through it because you know these are these are Catholic Catholic Marxists, and like a lot of what they lay out here and their the program that they sort of outline in this manifesto is you know like based on socialist principles. But like, what I liked about reading this is that it was like this this whipsaw effect between <laughs> it was like watching a game of tennis between uh, yes and no <laughs> as I'm going through <laughs> it. So uh, let, let, let's just read a couple of these. So uh, point number one, uh, Jesus Christ is the way and the truth and the life who became man for the salvation of all. Um, Wait, I'm going to uh, take a hard pass on um, that. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> uh, I currently, I am debating between whether it's uh, Elijah or Al Mahdi. <laughs> We believe in the authority and teachings of Christ entrusted to his church. We invite all in his sympathy and beliefs and goals to join us. Our project concerns the common good of all humanity. Well, if it's the common good of all humanity, I mean, like, why would you, why lead off with this thing about how Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life? I mean, again, if you believe that, that's your belief. And one of the things that Mark said to me when he was sort of debating coming on the show was, like, I'm a Catholic, so the question of religion and getting it right is very important to me, and I'd be worried that I would be like, leading people astray uh, from that religious question by sort of giving countenance to, I don't know, the show or our sense of humor or whatever. And I just feel like, you know, to me, the question of religion and other people's religion is exactly that. It's other people's. It's, it's a question for them, not for all of humanity or like all of society, especially one as diverse as 21st century America. Right. Uh, I've, that's not that's not very trad of you, buddy. That's not trad of you uh, at all. Uh, I've uh, I've made a lot of jokes so far in this show about Christianity being pagan. And I don't really, really believe it. It's funny to say, but I don't I don't I don't care what people believe. I really don't. I went to a Jesuit university. I've known people who have all types of beliefs uh but the sort of one sticking point in the actual i'm getting into very fugal singing territory of have you ever actually read the bible (laughs) sir (laughs) sir but no it is a very big sticking point in the bible that uh well in the first books only one group of people is allowed to even care about god and then in the next books they're pretty explicit about saying that state and god are very different and the laws of heaven are not meant to be the laws of laws of uh, state but uh there's a world of belief out there and for that reason it should have no fucking place in government and if it does for you if you think that's if that's important to you you if you fully implemented it you would be see something you would see something like franco spain you would be seeing half well, a here's million the thing. dead in camps like, um, it's no good it has never worked out I, sorry I, anticipating sort of the critique of that point of view i think people might say well many of the great uh social and reform movements in american history were informed by christianity and religion but i, I think my at least my response to that is like whether it's the civil rights movement or the labor movement or things like that those all had political goals and ends which could be explained and defined 
social good completely independent of religion. Yeah. And like and, and and when you get into things like, you know, gay marriage and things like that, like it's only a religious argument that's being made. Like there is no argument that's against gay marriage that can point to any kind of broader social ill, or at least if there is, I haven't seen it. It's just like, it's about a matter of personal religious conception. And if that's the case, it should be just, I think think you should keep it to your, not keep it to yourself. You can believe what you want, but I don't think you can involve it in politics unless you have a better, more universal reason. I don't know. See, but the thing is, is that what we're talking about, the, the, the point of view that you guys are talking about is a modernist point of view. It is the modern, uh, Modern political mindset that came out of the Enlightenment, and, these and they guys reject, reject it. Yeah, they reject yeah, yeah, yeah. They say no to it. It is an incommensurable thing. They uh, they see that and they're like, no, that's not what the state is. That's not what politics is. It is a thing that is this like God centered, uh, you know, uh, communal movement towards grace and all elements of the state coming toward pointing in the same direction for the salvation of all. That's what they think, and they're never going to be thought otherwise and like when they say hey uh religious as you said religious impulse has um has driven a lot of good reforms that's always been one element of a broader push that is within a framework of modern secular democracy and they're always in the back seat and i say and i think we could agree that they have to stay in the fucking back seat <laughs> i mean they just do and because what they want and like that's why franco is such a good person to point to and that's like when i ever read when i read any of these guys even the ones who say they're leftists all i think of is franco is what they want is they want a pre-modern catholic uh conception of of uh of sovereignty in a modern mass politics now doesn't walther and that it doesn't those are those cannot work together. like doesn't walther without actually massive amounts of repression without massive amounts of of state coercion. Doesn't Walther actually want like America to be a monarchy? Doesn't he want to restore some yeah, lost he, monarch he wants, or something like he that? Wants the, there's a there's an 80 year old Bavarian art collector named uh, Franz. <laughs> He's like the son of the deposed last king of Bavaria. And by this, and according to like the Stuart uh, line of succession, he's the last living Jacobite, the Stuart pretender uh, ruler of England. Who got who were overthrown uh, in the Glorious Revolution of 1688, and in his mind he is the rightful sovereign of the United <laughs> States. No, of Great no, Britain. no. Okay, this is the dumbest thing these fucking people believe. If you're not a Carlist, get the fuck <laughs> off. Stop listening. Fuck you. This is a Carlist show. First and foremost, we're secular, secular Carlists. Fuck you. <laughs> I mean. Real requete hours. <laughs> <laughs> All I gotta say. Uh, Trump, Hillary, uh, I'm going for Franz. 2016, <laughs> hit the restart button. I want to go back to Franz. But no, Matt, to, you, to your exactly to your point, I think uh, number bullet points two and three in the Tradinista Manifesto are very telling. Point two: uh, political authority ought to promote the teachings of the church. We recognize the social kingship of Christ, and all people are subject to him by his very essence and power. (laughs) I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh at this, but um, it is funny to me. Uh, While the polity has a positive obligation to facilitate the salvation of its citizens, it should not compel them to become Christian. Oh, that's very generous. But um, the polity autonomous, though not perfectly separated from the church. Now, before you respond to that, let me just read number two. Sorry, number three. Number three. The goal of political authority is to create a good and virtuous people. The law is a teacher and always promotes a particular conception of the good. Morally neutral laws are therefore impossible. The essence of government is to lead citizens to virtue and societies to the highest of the natural common goods. All law and policy must aim at the common good, not at a private interest. Now, other than that last sentence, and our, our friend has made this point, and I think it's a very good one, Number three here is, in fact, actually one of I, one of the most dangerous things that you can believe politically. That the law can you can use the law or political ideology to create virtuous people. It's the hallmark of every great rules make a great society. <laughs> I think that that one, that one is actually probably more mistaken than just like the things that that we disagree on about, you know, social policy vis-a-vis gay and uh, gay people and women. 
Yeah, I mean, you could you could argue that he's right about the they're right about the idea that there's no morally neutral laws and that laws promote some sort of they promote morality. a moral like, vision, th- right? Right, but the idea that that therefore has to be a a a, a sectarian one is crazy and deeply harmful. Yeah, and you know they, they said that you know people are autonomous though not perfectly separated from the church, and it's just like well, I gotta say to that is like. It, it, that's for you. It's not for me. I don't believe in the church. Yeah, yeah. Like, why would I? Why would I not be perfectly separated from it? Like, yeah. Second of all, uh, mercury and vaccines causes autonomy. And, <laughs> wait, is that the same thing? Uh, number four is a uh, political authority must be decentralized as far as possible. What do you, you guys have any thoughts on that? I'm uh, personally, I, I like central centralized authority. I, I think. Local and community forms of justice are inherently reactionary, but that's just me. Yeah, they're bullshit. I mean, if you ever have been to a city council meeting, it's all people who are too stupid to be cops, uh, but want to oppress people. They're what we call suppressive persons. Uh, Get it out of there. Uh, Number five, economic life should be ordered to the common good. Again, I I think I could could fuck with that. Um, Number six, capitalism must be abolished. Um, Get it out of here. Down with that. Class society must be erased. Again, checking that out. Yeah, good. Do it. Now we've uh, we've we've waited. We got through those first three, which first three or four are tough. And now now they're now they're now this is um, exciting my my pleasure zones. Yep. Um, It's a universal effort founded in solidarity for a just society based on the common good, precisely because the capitalist class serves only its only its own sectarian interests. (laughs) I guess they should just be replaced with another sectarian interest. Um, Eight, livelihood should not depend on the market. Smash that motherfucking like button. Yeah. Definitely. Hell yeah. Nine, every person has a right to property. Yeah, roll those billions. I'm with with it. Yeah. Um, Worker cooperatives should be strongly encouraged. Hell yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? Uh, number 11, I work in one. racism, misogyny, homophobia, transphobia, and similar forms of oppression must be eradicated. The racism shit, yeah. I'm done with it. <laughs> I'm done with it. Still misogynist, though. <laughs> okay, this is where I, uh, we, 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 uh, we, hit a, we hit a stretch there. It was, we were rolling four, five, six, but we're about to come on trips, okay? 11, again, racism and homophobia, transphobia must be eradicated. Number 12, Marriage and family life should be specifically supported by the polity to promote the common good. We uphold the value of indissoluble marriage of one man and one woman ordered towards the generation of offspring, which is the foundation of society. Accordingly, the polity should take the supporting... For a minute there. Few things are more hostile to the poor among us than the bourgeois conception of marriage and family life in which marriage becomes a mere contract or means to self-gratification. We therefore reject contraception, no-fault divorce, in vitro fertilization, and any similar attempt to sever marriage from procreation or interfere with its indissolubility. I mean, come on. Dude, do you know, like, ask yourself, do you know a single person whose lives were, like, irreparably harmed by their parents getting divorced. I mean, I don't. This is this is why people cannot fucking stand you people because you have some just I don't know, like you, you you're in sophomore year of college, you have some sexual fear and the, you get to the part where you want to tell everybody what's best for them. You, like why? Why do you care if people get divorced? Why? Why do you give a shit? Why do you care? Why do you care about a no-fault divorce? You're fucking twenty. You've never even held hands with a girl. <laughs> you're, it, you're, you're bizarre recluses from society. Why do you have any say in this? And when fuck they, off. And when they said that, uh, you know, one man, one woman marriage is the foundation of our society. <coughs> again, I just I'm gonna have to disagree with that. My point on this when I read it was that um, electricity is actually the foundation of our society because if that went away things would fall apart a lot quicker than if like every mom and dad in America got divorced tomorrow. Yeah. If that, if that yeah. happened, that would, that would take it. That yeah. shit would, like, honestly, that like, would much have a much higher body count. That's for yeah. Me. Well, sure. just think about it this way. Like conduct this thought experiment. If every mom and dad in America got divorced tomorrow, I maintain that things would pretty much carry on exactly as they are now. The people who would be otherwise disadvantaged would continue to be so. And the people who would be basically unaffected by divorce would be unaffected by it. But like the, 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 the difference, again, is in money and in economic class rather than whether divorce or, you know, w- 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 what your parents do is like not an inherently good or bad thing. 
And the, and he, when he talks about when they when these guys talk about the 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 dangers of the modern conception of marriage, where it's just personal happiness and and so all you care about is whether you're happy, and so you throw away the relationship and all the structures you've created uh, just on this fleeting thing. And there are things that are more important than happiness. You can make a you can write a very moving article about how you know what we're losing with this modern sort of consumer idea of relationships big but dating the alternative yeah. the alternative the state enforcement of of a religious conception of marriage it's like it's not like we don't know what that looks like you know that has happened in the past uh there are places that still have that with other religions i mean it like I, whenever i read these guys i always just think of like 50s uh ireland you know, some woman with a black eye going to her priest and him solemnly telling her that, you know, marriage isn't really just about your personal happiness or fucking carting off pregnant teenagers to be slaves in the Magdalene laundries. I mean, we know what this actually means in practice when you put state power behind these kind of beliefs. And it's way fucking worse than whatever kind of ennui we're creating with these disposable relationships. <laughs> Number 13. Abortion is a horrifying crime which must be eradicated immediately. Do you guys really think that? Yeah, you don't okay, really think good. that. We're you done. don't really think that because they do you, though. They you, really do. No, but they don't. Because if you really thought that abortion is the murder of babies and you, millions are happening before your eyes, you wouldn't be writing fucking articles. Well, you I, wouldn't really be doing that. You don't really fucking think <laughs> that or else you would be acting differently. You wouldn't be fucking tweeting otherwise you're the biggest fucking pussy in the world. What are you gonna you you're gonna you're gonna quote tweet about it? Fuck off! You don't really think that you just well, like telling people what to do. Well, no, I mean I'm gonna I'm gonna slightly push back on that because I think the the argument could be made is like, well, you know, I think the U.S. government is a blood soaked military empire responsible for you know millions of deaths, but I'm not like you know assassinating people or blowing my blowing up traffic or anything like that either. So they could they say that well, you know, look. I'm, I'm not trying to kill anyone either, but I, I think that the real test for whether you believe abortion is a horrifying crime and and the moral and legal equivalent of murder is whether you're willing to cop to women being sent to jail for obtaining one. If you're not willing to do that, I'm sorry, but I can't take seriously your claim that you think it's, like I said, the moral and legal equivalent of murder. Hey, those guys might hate Kevin Williamson, but at least on that front, he kept he's it totally 100. Yeah, he keeps hardcore. it real. Kevin, he kept Kevin, it Kevin keeps it very real. Yeah. Um, they go on the uh, anthropogenic uh, climate change threatens common good of all mankind and must be fought. Uh, agree. We reject nationalism and the nation state. Agree. Uh, warfare is justified only by careful moral analysis. I don't know, a little iffy on that one. I, I don't know what they mean by like, that's getting yeah. into this sort of like just war we theory. Could, we could have invaded is, Iraq. Oh, we, they love that just yeah, war we, shit. Which they I love honestly, I think is hokum. Yeah, yeah and, I think it's crap. <laughs> I, I think they mean that like we could have invaded Iraq if like we had proof that Saddam was building a Planned Parenthood. <laughs> <laughs> All societies. It's like the saber metrics of warfare. <laughs> They're like, well, I've got, I've got the formula, yeah. man. I know exactly. Yeah. I know. The no precise number of people that have to die before we can intervene. <laughs> All societies should generously welcome migrants fleeting hardship. Um, agree. Cock. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> In everything possible, we stand with the poor and the marginalized. Uh, okay. Agree. We strive towards a genuine polity animated by Christian socialist principles. Again, I'm not going to argue that point, but I can't really. 20, the last one is liberalism has failed and we must move beyond it. And, you know, I think basically we yeah. basically agree with that. Yeah. OK, so, th you know, that that's the Tradinistas and uh, they've gotten some press this week. And again, it's like I feel like I don't want to needlessly insult anyone who could we that we where we agree on probably more than we disagree, at least based on that manifesto. But the things we do disagree on are, again, it's sort of non-negotiable yeah. for either side. So it's it's, it's, yeah. it, it's difficult. You know what I mean? I mean, the deal, the deal is like you guys, hey, you guys want a more equitable world, a more just world. Very importantly, a world where we're not all killed by runaway climate change. Get on board, man. Let's fucking create a goddamn coalition. Rainbow coalition of shit. But uh, yeah, all that other shit. Sorry. No. Like, here, here's And it's like, what do you want? Do you want half the pie or none of it? You know, and here's the thing. Like, I was thinking, like, could I, like, like, let's say a Tradinista becomes like the, the next Bernie Sanders or like Jeremy Corbyn, or if there was like a politician that espoused this platform and values, like, could I find myself supporting them? 
And I think the answer is like maybe on like a local level, if I knew that uh, they would essentially have no say in uh, like the Supreme Court or anything like that. But if this group ever became the dominant political faction in our society, I I would consider um, armed resistance, basically. Yeah, this sounds like shit. I'm sorry. It's no good. It's no good. The good good news, though, is that that'll never happen. Because as we discussed, these are 16 weirdos online. Yeah, it's... Yeah, they... I do not like their chances. I mean, that's the thing. It's like, you know, I feel like I... I have respect for a lot of people who do who do serious work uh, that is inspired by religion to to fight poverty. Because to be honest, it's more than I'm doing. Because I'm just hosting a podcast where I'm an asshole. But you know, it, it's at the same time. It's like I if you're holding out this thing of like this this kind of you know be careful because you could be alienating com- comrades. Otherwise, I just really have to question how how many people. Um, actually believe in all of these socialist principles, but also sincerely think abortion is murder. And I gotta, I gotta say, it's probably not that many people. I should say, I should add that I've, I've heard from, uh, from left Catholics who have not refuted us that that guy Mike Mark Marin uh, <laughs> is actually not even one of these dudes. Yeah, he's, he's actually a, just a good old fashioned right wing Catholic. Well, he told me and he has no interest in seeing any kind of coalition built between the left and the Catholic that is, people. Yeah, he, well, he told me that he didn't write the Tradinista uh, Manifesto and that he could have some quibbles, but he says he mostly signs on for it. So, But then again, with these people, when yeah, they say... well, that's not what I heard. I know. Well, these people, when they say some quibbles, like you, th- 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 that's yeah. doing a lot of work. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, uh, so, I don't know. That That's our beef with the, the Catholic Church. Um, any, any, any closing thoughts on this? Uh, Michael Corleone at the end of Godfather 3 did nothing wrong. <laughs> uh, I have uh, two things. One, everyone who's listening to this, uh, welcome to hell. Enjoy it. Uh, hopefully we can, we can like be in the same tar pit together and trade memes for eternity. <laughs> uh, and secondly, I will say that the thing about the article that bothered me the most is that he sort of pitched us as like fucking South Park. Right. Like, yeah. well, they see the absurdity of both sides. Like, like there's no point of view, and that is wrong. We have a fucking point. Yeah, of view. no, but I, I did say Mark. It's not nihilism. Uh, Mark did. Uh, he he did walk that back. He did. He he sort of said that he he got that wrong in the article. At least he said that to me. Well, I'm waiting for the fucking retraction, bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>